All right, <clears throat> I'll try to here. Well, I got word that my <clears throat> connection to the, to the servers was excellent, so I'm going to try this again. So we're going to try to get to paired to Violet today, but that is internet issues, so stream link. Well, let's go. If you come here hoping for news, I'm afraid there isn't any. Everything exactly as it was. Yastola is still investigating primals in the Far East. Thancred is still gathering intelligence in the Imperial provinces. And Alphino is still out there somewhere. There's been no word since the first re scheduled report. Nor does it respond to... Does he respond to calls? And all the while, I've just been meant to sit around here waiting. It's driving me mad. Begging your pardons, a bare message from the Eorzean Alliance. Thank the gods for that. We have a visitor. Welcome to the Rising Stones. If you have a message, I should be most eager to hear it. My lady, the, hours, the Alliance leadership will soon convene to discuss the matters of Ossian influence, and they humbly request the presence of the science of the Seventh Dawn. I'm going to try to clear my throat there. Having assessed intelligence provided by the Alamegan resistance concerning the whereabouts of Xenos remains, they too suspect Ossian involvement. I wish to deliberate on suitable course of action. As for the foremost authorities on our, as the foremost authorities on our foe, your 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 orders council your orders council would be most welcome. Of course, we should be glad to assist in whatever we can. Without almost everyone afield, I'd say this one falls to us. By which means, I'm not going on going on my own. Come with me, I trust. Eskos likes punching face. Nothing like meetings. If you would rather not, how do, do you think I feel? I despise formal locations, as you well know, but in the absence of Alphino and the others, we'd just have to grim and bear it, won't we? Yeah. I suppose. Well, there you are. We accept your invitation. Thank you. The time and day of the meeting is, will be shared in due course, but it can confirm that the council will take place in El Amigo by your leave. He's from the Immortal Flames. That's why he's got that salute. I somehow doubt we'll, we'll have anything useful to offer, but standing mutely at a meeting would be... Still be better than nothing we've been doing of late. Let's make ready to depart, shall we? Thank great. What's going on, man? All right, just be careful on the road back, do you hear? D did I hear right, Leo? Is Thancred coming back? Aye, that he is. Says he's, a he's acquiring some important intelligence. Acquired some important intelligence. Being in Guardian territory, though, he can risk sharing the particulars in case the Imperials were listening in, so he said he'd head back as quick as he could, and to make sure someone was waiting for him in the Alamegan quarter. Understood. Eskos and I will go. I'm bound for Alamigo anyway. There's sure to be time before the council begins. Come on, let's be off. All right, I'll meet you in quarter. Okay. 
Joke about good for land. Kind of annoying uh, in the air. I found a table to sit at. It's a site for so. Let's see. You tell it. it <clears throat> see. I don't know why I'm having a scratchy voice. Weird. Not like I'm sick or anything. Maybe I just haven't been talking for a while. You two are sight for slow eyes. Now I, all I need is the water, is water for my parched throat. Fetch me a couple of you. Traipsing through Imperial territories. Thirsty work. Yay. I won't bother telling you to catch your breath. Whatever brought you galloping back to us, I assume it's urgent. Quite. Without further ado, then. After the successful uprisings in Doma and Alamigo, rebels in several other provinces were inspired to follow suit. Unfortunately, they did not fare quite so well. The Dalmascans paid the heaviest price. For their defiance, the Emperor made a show of raising their capital to the ground, prompting many of their neighbors to abandon thoughts of resistance. But not all have given up on liberty. Heartened by the news of Doma's prisoner exchange, some still believe that the Empire may one day be amenable to negotiation. We have the Shinobi to thank for spreading the good word. They have worked tirelessly to keep the subjugated informed, and a little knowledge can go a long way. There is at least a spark of hope, then. A spark in want of kindling, yes. The Alliance has already begun supplying materiel to resistance movements abroad, many of whom would otherwise struggle to continue the fight. The support effort has been led by the Sultana and the Elder Seedseer, who have both seen enough Alamegan refugees to know the consequences of oppression. And for their troubles, they have quickly earned a reputation as folk heroes in certain corners of the Empire. That is all for the provinces. As for the Garlean motherland itself. Our friends the Popularis have suffered something of a setback, I regret to say. Talk is rife that Doma has summoned a primal and the Empire's more liberal voices are being drowned out in the fearful clamor for retribution. And who did they think orchestrated this summoning? Oh, any but those truly responsible. Xenos has seen to that. Speaking of whom, the Crown Prince is recovering remarkably well. Well enough, in fact, to enable him to personally tour the provinces, putting the fear of the Emperor into the hearts of any would-be dissidents. He walks in plain sight, and none suspect him. Then it's as we feared. Yes, an Assian wears his skin. But it was not that which brought me here in such haste. During my time in the provinces, I learned many things. Yet at no point did I hear any report of a Doman emissary in the capital. But Alphano should have arrived by now. Could they be holding in there in secret? The possibility did cross my mind, but I have reason to believe he never reached his destination. As you know, scions assigned to covert operations such as Riol and myself are issued special link pearls for communication in the event of an emergency. I mention this because it was originally Alphano's task to coordinate the response at headquarters, meaning he has one. And whose voice should I hear when mine recently crackled to life? You spoke with Alphano? Spoke with? No. I but heard his voice, and none too clearly at that. Two words were all I could make out. The Burn. The Wasteland on the edge of Othard. Something must have happened to them there. There's no time to waste. We must make for the burn at once. 
I had a feeling you might say that. And? I can't very well sit around here drinking tea if Alphano's in trouble. You said yourself that this link pill was only to be used in emergencies. So I'm going, and that's the end of it. Oh, far be it from me to change your minds. Would I am to neglect making preparations for the con console. We must act swiftly before Alphano's trail goes cold. I propose we first pay Hien a visit. He is sure to want to hear about these developments, and he may well be able to advise us on how best to reach the Vern. A solid plan, and we are sure there's in Doma if he chooses. Is she not? I dare say she will join you in the search if you asked her nicely. Well, you see to that, I shall go and report my findings to their lives. You may leave any preparations for the council to me. Thank you, Thancred. Right, to Doma then. You have much more to share with you, Stola. No, I can turn the volume now. Done with VA for the moment. Time to go to the Doman Enclave! Oh, hold on. There we go. Instead of a thousand, it's only seven hundred. <laughs> Talk to the guard to enter. Oh, wait a minute. You talk to Yashilda first. Nope. I can't remember if this is the end. Nope. Hmm. That is curious indeed. Well, many other matters demand my attention at the present, so I shall bear that what you have told me. Should you notice any change, do not hesitate to seek me out. Thank you, my lady. You are most kind. Well, well, two faces from the dim, dim and distant past. Come now, you ha it hasn't been that long. Who was that you were speaking with? A local miner who supplies crystals for the rebuilding effort. Of course, she claims to have struggled to find a crystal with so much of a trace of elemental energy. Upon learning that, I had some knowledge of Ether. Have some knowledge of Ether here comes seeking my console. Just now, he brought me one of his recent finds. It was precisely as he described, devoid of elemental energy and eerily reminiscent of the de-aspected de crystals that manifest in Eorzea in the days prior to the Calamity. It would be wise to investigate the phenomenon more closely. Indeed, on a more positive note, the locals seem to have taken a liking to you. More an interest in than a liking to, I think. The sight of Mkoti, with a particular contraption upon upon her head has a certain novelty value in, this, in these parts. In actual, in actual regard they may have of me, I owe wholly to you and the others who come before. Everyone here has seemed exceedingly cooperative, and I am pleased to report that I have all but concluded my investigation. Simply put, by focusing one's will upon an ether-infused object of worship, it is possible to conduct a summoning. So, the fact that they are objects of worship is the key. They are themselves infused with their requisite belief. 
Correct. Such sacred relic, relics as the Kojin collect obviate the need for a religious fervor in the summoner. Yatsuyu, being the most obvious example, she had but to associate the artifact given to her by Asahi with the divine, and it served to amplify her desires and give them form. A form nourished through the power of crystals, also provided by her brother, and thus was Tsukuyomi brought into being. Which brings me to the question of pre preventative measures, to which I have yet to find a satisfactory answer. At present, I know not that will avail us, save to keep watch over the movement of relics and crystals, as if we did not have enough to keep watch over already. But I doubt you came all this way to hear that much, much, uh, which may be perused to report. Has something happened to Alphano? Exposition! Hmm. I shall join you in your search, of course. Thank you, Strollo. I should be glad for your help, truly. Now, if there's nothing else, I shall go ahead and request an audience with Lord Hien. Alize puts on a brave face, but she has a little talent for concealment. We should join her at the, the Kien Khan. Now I can go inside. So I need to refresh my beverage. I should not have allowed Master Alphner to leave without an escort, but it avails me not to dwell in the past. We must focus on what can be done now. My report can wait. Find Alpha Nose must take priority. There you are. I've appraised the end of the situation. Greetings, my friend. Alize has explained it all to me. Needless to say, we shall have your, our full cooperation in the search, even if Alpha Nose Trail does lead to the burn of all places. Mm. The region known as the Burn occupies a special place in Garlean history. Every child in the Empire is familiar with the tale. In the decent past, it was verdant land teeming with life, but successive, successive summonings saw it bleed dry of ether and reduced to a desert. It is upon holding that devastation that primals were wrought that, that primals had wrought that Emperor Solus was spurned to embark on his crusade against their kind. The burn offers a glimpse of the future we seek to prevent. Now, n no, do you have any reason why Alphano might have gone there? I mischance, though it lies on the route to Garlemal, there is no place to make a stop. My guess is they encountered some manner of trouble there. In any event, I am of the same mind as Alize. We have no choice but to take our search to the burn, given the considerable distances involved. It is best we went by bird. Let's go, then I have your, our yoles. You agree we'll use ready falcons for the others? I shall gather our swiftest birds. Near the House of the Fairs, says an overlook. Pray join us there once you have seen to your preparations. And prepared. Especially after that ginger salad. House of the Fairs. Did it again. Popped on the chocobo. That's all right. Everyone here possessed of a bird, let us away. 
Remember, our destination is a barren wasteland. There is no civilization to, to speak of for 100 moms in all directions. Take care, you do not lose your way. Territory tied five minutes. Hey, that's not too bad. I'm waiting to check on my squadron. I need to uh, run them through some dungeons so I can get a rank up. Currently a second lieutenant. You can become a first lieutenant, then a captain. But certain things need to happen in order for that to happen.
All right, squadron management done. What else can we do while we're waiting here? I know, I can refill my beverage. And back. Clean up my bags from a uh, year. I think I'm also earning, <clears throat> earning my FC as I'm coming to credits. Uh oh, I think I got a leg. This is proof of lack. So some drop frames.
There we are. Fisher's behind. Bony tongue. I get bony tongue. Well, here we go. I don't have to worry about that. Off to the burn. I know you get a got a y'all.
All right, pro tip to everybody. Whatever you do, don't get ahead of your tank. All right, pop my cooldowns just as soon as we kill them. This looks like an elegant place.
to turn on the volume for myself. Oh, I hate this one. Come on, man, give me room to get behind him. I can barely do it. This is why I say you should play all your all the classes and at least get a good under decent understanding about them. Even if you can't play them well, at least get an idea of how it works. Because then you'd be like, oh, positionals. There that's a thing for melees. We got through the same storm.
a sand dragon. Ah, fuck. Yay! No, I wanted to leave first so you could take it because I didn't want it. I don't remember. I'm going to turn it up anyways. Ah, there you are. Yeah, it is. Between contending with bloodthirsty beasts and sand in my every conceivable place, I had begun to despair of finding you again. Do you recognize the crashed ship over yonder? Mistress Alizé and I briefly inspected it. It is the vessel that bore Master Alphino away. But there was no sign of him, nor of Maxima and his people.
War Machina. It would seem they were involved in a struggle. There may be clues. We should split up and search the area. These were no ordinary soldiers. Over here! The insignia on this man's uniform identifies him as one of the Emperor's personal guard. Hand-picked soldiers, answering only to the royal family. That would explain why all the casualties are Garlean. They were fighting their own. You're saying the Emperor was behind all this? That Alphano is his prisoner? Alphano is fine, I'm sure of it. Aye, we must not jump to conclusions. Besides, Alphino is more than capable of looking after himself, is he not? I suggest we return to Doma to consider our options. Whatever happened here, Master Alphino is long gone, and any subsequent search may safely be left in the hands of the Shinobi. Where in the world are you, brother? If you die on me, I will never let you hear the end of it. Back in the Domain Enclave. Well, that was a decidedly uneventful journey. I almost found myself hoping for a standstill. Joking aside, I'd say our birds are due for a good brush down and a treat or two, don't you? I had hoped to steal a moment of, of rest after our little outing, but it would seem duty calls for an emissary arrived in my absence. Do not let us keep you then. Actually, I was wondering if you might join me. I cannot think of a guest who could fail to be impressed by the presence of the science. At least none that I should be happy to receive. Of course, if you think that will be useful. Thank you. Let us return to my manor then. We might have V out here. V out VA. V something. Voices! Please! What brings you here? Oh, Alliance business. We have a request for Doma. Well, Hian. But that can wait. They told me you were out searching for Alphino. Did you manage to pick up his trail? Uh, kind of. But not really. Exp exposition. Well, if he wasn't at the crash site, he might still have escaped. We have to keep searching. And we will. 
Alphano embarked on this journey as an emissary of Dorma, and I hold myself responsible for his safe return. I will have our shinobi in the provinces search for him as a matter of urgency. Chin up, Alize. You'll get to admonish your brother for his recklessness yet. <laughs> well, someone has to do it. I, I like Yen because he knows... He know he he's from his experience with Alize. He, he knows exactly what to say. He's he's such a good diplomatic as well as a fighter. I mean, perfect, perfect for Dover, uh, for a leader at least in these troubled times. I'm sure he's going to be fine. There is one thing I'm not sure about, though. You said it was the Emperor's personal guard that attacked Alphano's airship. But the Popularis would never have been able to arrange the prisoner exchange without Varus's blessing. So why would he sabotage his own mission? They may not have been acting on Varus's orders. The guard answer not only to him, but to his family. The Crown Prince included. When Yotsuyu summoned Tsukuyomi, Asahi was quick to proclaim that a dormant citizen had violated the terms of our agreement that the negotiations had failed. And it is this version of events that is now being repeated across Garlemald. To hear the tale, one would think the prisoner exchange never took place. Plainly, someone is manipulating matters from the shadows. Most likely Xenos, or whoever it is that wears his face. Whichever Asian you mean, we all know the nature of our adversary. The servants of Chaos are true to their name. Their meddling has cost Dorma a chance at peace. Whoever it was that loosed his personal guard, the Emperor cannot be ignorant of these developments. We must proceed on the assumption that our treaty is indeed in tatters. But come, Lise. You have journeyed far. Let me hear your petition. Right. So the big news is that Alamigo has agreed to join the Eorzean Alliance. To make it official, and discuss where we all go from here, the leaders of the Five Nations are planning to hold a meeting, and we were hoping you might come too. We've already seen what we can achieve when we work together, and the Alliance hopes to work even more closely in future. They think it's our best hope of keeping the Garleans in check, and I agree. As do I. By coordinating our efforts in the East and West, we may be able to discourage them from committing their forces to a single front. I accept your invitation. I must, however, ask for time to attend to some pressing matters here. In light of recent events, the risk of Imperial reprisals is greater than ever, and I would not leave Dorma unguarded. Ere I depart, I must shore up her defenses. Understood. I'll let the Alliance know. We'll wait to hear from you before setting a date. The meeting's to be held at the Royal Palace in Alamigo, incidentally. Do you remember the way? Well enough. Please assure my hosts that I will not keep them waiting any longer than I have to. Consider it done. And thank you for agreeing to come. If we all put our heads together, we're sure to find the best way forward. For everyone. Peace. Don't worry, Alphano's been through countless trials and comes out stronger every time. He'll be back, I'm sure. That the Alliance would extend an invitation to the Doma beseeks the depths of their concern, nor are they misguided. If Garlemald has fallen under Asian control, the threat we face is incalculable. Yuguri assures me the task of searching is best left to our comrades. I shall trust in their experience and focus on what I can do. While we are happy to cooperate with the Orzean Alliance, there are many things that Doma must do. 
I, I just want to put a point here. If you look at this scene, influential people, important people here. We do have Hien as the, the main, but the rest are female. And I like that. And it, if you look at things like leaders of the Aeolian Alliance, so Lise is basically kind of like the representative, the emissary rep representative of the Republic of Alamigo. Um, you have the Sultana uh, Nanamo, who's the leader of Ulda. We have Merwib Blusvin as the um, Admiral of uh, Limsa Liminsa. Um, yeah. And then the the others, we have uh, Ishgard has um, Ish, yeah, it's basically Ishgard. Because we also have the Elder Seats here, um, uh, Kani Senna. Kani Senna. So basically the leaders of the, the initial three city-states are all female. And Raubon's in there, but he's kind of like, he's the, the general of, was the general of the Immortal Flames, now the general of the Resistance. I don't think they've changed, they just haven't changed your name yet. Uh, the the command, the general things, but Lees is the diplomatic leader and kind of coordinates with, with Raubon, etc. cetera. Uh, Ishgard is like the only one who has a male at the end, head, head of the government. And even that, it's a republic, so they have uh, the House of Lords, House of Commons. Lise has a republic, which is just everybody. It's just no separate houses, just one. Um, but Lise is still the representative, the head of that. So she's at the table, and she brings her general, Raubon, it, which is frequently what Nanamo does, uh, did when he was leader of the Immortal F Flames. So the representation among this all is very much significant and is very shared and i really do like how they have such powerful women in this story in, in this story and i really think that this might be one of the reasons why a lot of people have been playing this game is because of representation and even the representation you've got a lalafell for old you've got a pajal which is essentially a hero with horns you got a regular here. <laughs> you got an Elizin with Ishgard and a Rogadin as or Rogadin as I like to call him for, for Limsa. The representation of the different races are there. So all the this different representation amongst all this group is and no matter what, no matter what race the warrior of light is, he is considered they, I should say, are considered, you know, race or gender. They're one and the same. It doesn't matter what race the, the warrior of flights is, which is another thing is there's no benefit to being any particular race in this game. All it is is a cosmetic thing. Like, I'm a little Lollifel right now. Yet, like my my AOEs take up the same space as my <laughs> Rogan in main. Uh, so there's no difference in power or anything. Uh, everybody is essentially on equal footing in here. So just just a kind of a little side note on it. And even that mixtures of colors and and everything. It's Doesn't matter what you look like; it's the same. Although I, that's quite uh, Ellison seemed to get a bad name frequently, which kind of sad. But, anyways, you know. Talk to you. My advisors and I will present. Uh, or will presently.
convened to discuss the matter of Dobis' defenses. You are welcome to stay, of course. Had you not offered, I would have requested leave to remain where the Assians are concerned, not may we left to chance. As ever, you are benefit from we would benefit from your experience. I thank you for coming, Lise. Even if it was on official business, I was hoping that there might might be time to show you the land you helped to save, and I will settle with a fleeting visit if means must. There never does seem to be enough time for anything, does there? But I did get to see a little of the Enclave. Made excellent progress, I must say, and soon you'll have the chance to see how we're getting on, too. Till the meeting, then. Um, Essigos, I was wondering if I might have a word with you before I go. In private. Oh, my friend. I will send Hakuru and the others in, for Hakuru and the others in the meantime. Great. I'll wait for you at the docks. Bye. This voiceover? I can't remember. Turning up just in case. Oh, it's not. Thanks for coming. Knowing you, you probably guessed what I wanted to talk about. Alize. She's acting as if everything's all right, but it's clear she's barely coping. The Alize I know is overbearing, willful, and reckless. And that's fine. It's how she deals with, fle with feeling weak. She has to keep moving, but she's afraid she'll fall apart. A lot like me. But the thing, thing about pe people like us is that we need someone to keep an eye on us. I had Papa Limo, and now I have friends in the Resistance. And Alize has you in the Scions. Before you start, I'm not saying you're, you're neglecting her. I'm sure you aren't, and I'm sure you won't. But she's a good friend, and when I see her like this, I can't help worrying. But please, make sure you give her all the support she needs, all right? You have nothing to worry about. Seriously. Monk fist bump. Thank you, Vesigos. It goes without saying, but if there's anything I can do, you only need to ask. Well, it's best be off. See you in Alamigo. I've been doing this thing, kind of teasing Catherick uh, um, in, in Bears and Dragons. Uh, because he switched from uh, ranger to rogue, uh, and um, Frederica's uh, dragon uh, getting the ability to turn into a um, the Dalkin uh, boy who refers to him as boy in human in the Dalkin form. Uh, he's been constantly just being like, oh, you're a rogue too? Ah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah rogue bro. <laughs> and he tries to do a fist bump. And Catherine's like, uh, what? <laughs> it's great. The thing is, is with boy, I... I Kind of give him a little bit of a characterization as this like troublemaker sort of person. All right, going back, everybody's here. Hey, Akuro. Uh, 
We all had our suspicions from the start, and part of me has credulous enough to believe the Empire's promises. Never again. The Imperial Court is a nest of vipers, and any peace they offer is laced with poison. Your returns most timely. We are just to praise those newly arrived in what, where matters stand. Is everything all right with Lise? I won't ask details. I know you'll tell me if they were important. I dare say I can guess the subject of your discussion with Lise. She, too, is never one for concealment. Fortunately for you, the individual in question seems none the wiser. <laughs> I love you, Shilma, so much. Ah, there you are, my friend. Everyone has assembled, so let us begin. One thing I like about Hien is he's confident, but not cocky. If we are to ready ourselves for invasion, we shall need manpower, provisions, and time, all of which are in notably short supply. Candid as ever, you giddy. And correct, I concede. Fortunately, I have an idea. Tis plain no single nation can stand against the might of the Empire. And it was only with the aid of others that Dorma succeeded in winning her freedom. So, I mean to take a leaf out of our Eorzean friend's book and form an alliance of our own. In addition to those with whom we already share an understanding, I would reach out to Hingashi and Suino Sato, and further afield to the myriad peoples of Nangsha and Dalmasca. I am under no illusion. Not all will answer the call. Yet disparate though we may be, we are united in our desire for freedom. If our neighbors could be made to see what is at stake, Asian machinations and all, cooperation need not be so far-fetched a notion. It may even seem practical. Under the guidance of our former leader, Master Louis Soir, we once strove to unite the fractious city-states of Eorzea. I dare say that experience shall be of use in your endeavor. We should be glad of your wisdom. For the record, I would have been in favor of this plan even if it hadn't been my grandfather's, but I have to ask, how will we secure the time to carry it out? Not that anyone has forgotten. But the Garleans have airships. Lots and lots of airships. Should they catch wind of our plan, they could send an armada to overwhelm us before our alliance had even begun to take shape. Not if we deny them access to the skies. During our time in the burn, the Warrior of Light and I chanced upon some Allegan ruins. Oh? As such ruins go, they were not particularly unusual. But something about the surrounding land struck me as odd. Faint though it was, its ethereal residue was uncannily similar to that of Azizla. Identical, in fact. For locations so far removed to share a single etheric signature is all but impossible. I conclude, therefore, that the Allegans created the floating continent with land taken from the burn. While that is a most intriguing theory, I fail to see what relevance it has to Dorma's defense. As his La was enclosed in a powerful energy barrier, impenetrable even to an Agrius class battleship. It occurred to me that those ruins may have enjoyed similar protection. I have no proof, but the Warrior of Light did report seeing a structure resembling other known Allegan field generators. That was the couple of places we All right. went through. Uh, but even if we could put up such an energy barrier, it surely wouldn't extend beyond the limits of the burn. So what's to stop the Garleans flying around it? Fuel. The Dalmascan capital, Rabanasta, was a key imperial refueling point in the east. By laying waste to it as a lesson to the rest, the Empire greatly hindered its own operations in the region. If an Imperial fleet were to advance upon Dorma, it would now have little choice but to travel 
as the crow flies over the burn. I see. A word of caution. Even assuming the generator still functions, raising a barrier of such a scale will require a prodigious amount of energy. And few places are so bereft of suitable crystals as the burn. Hmm, a source of energy. Tell me, did the Allegans make a habit of launching things into the sky? A curious question. Besides Azaz La, I know of only one other notable instance. The Red Moon Dalamud, whose fall triggered the calamity. Just the two occasions, you say? Then I believe I may have a solution to our energy problem. You do? I may. To find out for sure, we would need to visit the Azim Steppe. Which would, I now see, present the perfect opportunity to discuss an alliance with the Zayla tribes. <laughs> How very neat. What say you then? Shall we see whither this road leads? Just curious. Okay, we've only done three quests <laughs> of seven to get through this patch. It is settled then. I will journey to the Azim Steppe with the Scions. Yigiri and Hakuru, I leave our neighbors to you. Hakuru? My apologies, but I won't be joining you. I am no atheologist, and what skills I do possess are unlikely to be of any great use of the mission. But more importantly, it seems to me that the ruins of the burn warrant attention. And so, while you're, you are away securing an energy source, I, engaged our, I will engage our friends at Godland Ironworks to undertake a complete overhaul of the field generators. We will need them in work, good working order, and our plan to succeed. I trust there's no objections. Uh, eh. I don't know. Both of these would kind of like work. Maybe not one that if somebody else could take take care of some things that Tataru could probably do. Um because it's Tartaro's baby. You know? Uh, hold on, I just... Ah. Anyway. Oh, I'm going to say half care in the burn. Half care on the steps. Oh, what I hear the Zayla like fighting with friends almost as much as foes. Good luck. Just the three of us, then. Very well. Shall we first make first for reunion? So this is the Azim step. The tales do, do not do it justice. If you think the view is impressive here, wait until you, we reach higher ground. Actually, seeing as your first visit, permit me to show you my favorite spot. I forget if there's VO in this part. <sighs> I will never.
never tire of this vista. The endless fields, the boundless skies. Tis a sight to make a man forget his cares. But not his purpose, I trust. Might this be a fitting moment to tell us what we are doing here? Of course. During my time with the Mole, I learned some few myths of this land. One goes thus. In the distant past, when all seemed doomed, a wayfaring soul came unto the steppe. Venturing into the northern crag, he received of Nama a sliver of her essence, a shard of the shining moon, and with it clove the tainted land from the earth. The end thus averted, to these fields did the wayfaring soul return, and venturing once more into the northern crag, he buried the shard and made unto the heavens an offering of blood. A tainted land cloven from the earth and an offering of blood to the heavens, as is La and Dalamud. That was my thinking, yes. And you believe that yonder mountains hide an artifact possessed of sufficient power to raise Azizla up to the heavens. I suppose that might suffice. Worth a closer look, would you say? I would. I'm telling you, Kian is smart as a tech. For sure. Keep forgetting which is the correct verbiage. From here we will travel to Bol Elo. There may there may sooner know about the particulars of the myth than raise the matter matter of an alliance with the rulers of the steppe. Is it because I'm lazy? Instead of flying on you all, I'll take a falcon. And it means I don't have to guide it. It'll just take me. This is why you get these falcon porters slash chocobo keeps. When you're going from one place that has a falcon porter to another place that has a falcon porter, Instead of popping on your mount and then flying yourself, hop on that. Just a few gill and you're there. They don't have an aetherite, but they sure as hell have a, a falcon porter. Yen, Essigos, I'm glad of your visit and the opportunity to welcome a new friend. Or may we serve you? This is a matter I would discuss with the mole. Concerns not only the people of the steppe, but the very land of the Far East. Exposition! Shot of the falling moon left behind a wayward, wayfaring soul? Do you need them this to protect our lands? I do. My friends and I wish to find the shard and ascertain the extent of its power. Will you tell me more of the place where it lies buried, this northern crag? If that is your wish, in the mountains to the north, there is a cavern called the House of the Crooked Coin. Inside this cavern is a pillar of stone that legends hold to be the source of Namal's power. There, I believe, we will find what you seek. Ah, yes, I know the place. Tis a brisk walk from here. And what are your thoughts on an alliance? Should the Empire return, our lands will be engulfed in a storm of conflict. Whether we will it or no, if we do not stand together, we will fall apart. This I believe in my heart. However, however, among the tribes of the step, there are those who revere Nama above all else. To them, the pillars are sacred and not to be disturbed. Should we proceed as, as you propose, such tribes are like to Spartan alliance, 
prompting others to follow their example. What is that is my concern. But it is by no means certain that the pillars will provide the power you seek. Ere you risk the ire of the followers of Nama, might you not first visit the house of the crooked coin? If all is as you hope, you can then consider how best to earn their blessing. I thank you for your counsel. We will do as you suggest. I have no desire to give offense to those with whom I would join hands. Thank you for your understanding. Though the mall may reign over this step today, this decision will shape the days to come, and we will not force others into war against their will. Nor are we. Hundredfold stronger are they who choose to fight on their own accord. Hey, it just happens that I lost my food buff. It seems the time has come to put put my skills to use. Pray lead the way to the house of the house of the crooked coin. Oh. There we are. Where we're going does not have fucking border. Are we in luck? We are. This is an elegant artifact, most likely built to regulate the flow of ether. I strongly suspect the ancients used it to stem the flow from here to the burn. That would explain how they were able to untether what became Azizla from its surroundings. But were we to throw open the floodgates, the resultant deluge would surely be sufficient to raise our wall. And in restoring the flow, we may also restore life to the wasteland. Hmm. What is it? While the device itself harbors a surfeit of ether, the opposite is true of the surrounding area. An effect of regulation, perhaps. A similar phenomenon seemed to be occurring in Doma. Whatever the explanation, the answer will not reveal itself here. We have seen what we needed to see. Let us return to Mol Illo. You found what you seek, then. Great, indeed, is the Dust Mother's power, if not less with 
will suffice to protect our lands, the blessing of the other tribes must now be sought. Of course, but to which tribe should we appeal? There are many who worship Nama, but none are so firm in their faith as the Dothral. Their consent shall be the key. I was us being surprised. The Dothral? We spoke of them, a warlike tribe composed of unique customs and beliefs. I sense the cooperation will not be easily won. Nay, but it will be worth, well worth the effort. The Dothral fear nothing, death least of all, and our alliance will be greatly strengthened by their presence. Let us go to Dothral Ka and treat with their Ketu, Sadu. Sadu. And that was her rally saying, you can do it. We just got Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> hey, Falcon Porter, can we, can we go to Dothral Ka? Uh, on throne. Close. Actually, I probably could have teleported there. <laughs> but... To be fair, it's cheaper. Uh, I should probably double check and see if there was a uh, Falcon Porter at the Thrall Ka. Uh, maybe there wasn't. There's a. Yeah, there's one. I'm trying to go down here. The Thrall Ka. Oh, see these horns? Look at the top there at their tent. They kind of look like ha uh, crescent moons. Being that Nama is the goddess of night, and she represented by the moon, I'm not sure if that was intended, or, you know, if they're just using Dizzo horns on top as decoration, but it kind of looks that way, so... Maybe it was intentional? You again... Other matters demand my time, Hagan, or Kahan, Kagan, Khan, something like that. Unless it is a battle you seek. Not, alas, not quite the opposite of fact. Exposition! I'm going to do that every time. Just exposition. I, I do that more this way, actually. I just need to do it around my microphone. Talking. Always talking. You say the pillars hold great power? Of course they do. They're the source of Nama's strength. To the death all, no place is more sacred, and we will, will make ash of any who would defile it. Though I see this is not your wish. You see the wisdom of our proposition, then. You will join hands with us. I said nothing of joining hands. You wish to yield Namal's power to defend these lands, and this I will allow. But for leaving the step to fight the men in the iron, I would have something returned. Namely? Namely battle with you, Khan. Huh? <laughs> the nod amended ere it began. I would face you again, alone, without distractions. Defeat me, prove yourself the stronger, and you shall have the Dothral as your allies. Surely these are agreeable terms. Well, this is not wholly unexpected turn of events, though I assumed I would be the one requiring to fight. Alas, Katoon has made her choice. Look, this is Essigos. He loves a good fight. Now we dance. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ha! There shall be a battle of the step shall not soon forget. Ah! Already my soul burns brighter. Prepare yourself for the Kahan, and I wait me outside the Kaha. I will gather my witnesses and join you anon. <laughs> yeah. Monk versus Black Mage. Yeah. I got this. Don't worry. She wants me to beat her face. I will beat her face. Don't worry. It's going to be no problem at all. Despite the fact that I'm going to be punching her and she's going to be using a bunch of magic. Duty! Sink to level 70 and... No, just level 70. I'm still going to have my uh, five level 400 gear on. Yes! This spot shall serve as well as any. I shall enjoy this Han. This Han. Hey, I'm doing this solo. Okay, there's nobody in chat to, to respond to that that really bad joke, Khan. Solo. Solo. Is this truly necessary? Have you no peaceable way of making decisions? Speak not of peace! You stand before proud warriors of the Dathal. In the heat of battle, do our souls burn brightest! We lay low the strong, that we may rise higher! That is our way! The way of might! There is no other! Oh, they do not want for conviction. <laughs> Indeed. It's what makes them such dangerous enemies. And such useful allies. Enough talk! It is time to fight! Yeah, you use magic instead of trying to beat me in the face. I almost call that cheating. Watch this. I don't need fucking magic. I got my chakra and my chi and all that sort of shit. I'm gonna keep the volume up, so it's gonna be kind of loud. We're not done yet. In death to our soul sing!
thing! Getting my face beaten is great. Come, we have only just begun. Enough. You were not granted leave to set the step ablaze. Well, well, the sun has come out to play. Be gone, Moonstruck Oranir! I am busy! Fool of a Dothal! Have you forgotten the face of your master already? The sun will never set! From his seat on high, he reigns over all, now and forever. Yet what should he find here, but a battle to determine the fate of the steppe? A battle waged without his blessing. This will not stand. By the way, this next part is where I have difficulties. You, Doman! You who come to petition the warriors of this land, forget that all Nama's children are wards of the Oranir. As first among my brothers, your petition is mine alone to judge. <sighs> These words are as wind from a horse's backside. Plentiful, but your axe sings more sweetly. Let her speak for you. In your place! Forgive me, Brother Magni, but we have an arrangement with the Dothal. We will not abide any interruptions. <laughs> so be it. The sun will pass judgment on all. Didacul, join me. in good company. We may dance alone. Beg not for mercy, for you will have none. Bear witness to the power and the glory of Azim! Constantly at each other's throats like rabid dogs. Gods, I'm turning into her. <laughs> <clears throat> I have not the patience for this, but if we must fight, let us at least be brief. Come. Hey, I gotta remember what button, what the buttons are. All right, we got Stone 4, the 7th Dawn, uh, Arrow 2, the 7th Dawn, Fear 2, the 7th Dawn, and Aether Wild. Wow. Okay, cool. Lord 
before me! Well and good! Concentrate! Before me! Mark well and learn! before me! Tremble before the sun! about it. Maybe the blue take and we need to make the sun Strength. What grace is this? Hey, I did that in one shot. Mappy, I didn't do that last time. Oh, we finished our fight. Guess we won. Such bliss in defeat. Twas a battle to burn soul and flesh to ash. We doth all will lend you our strength as promised. Nama's power is yours to wield.
What does the sun say to that? <laughs> the sun is not driven by base motives such as yours. But I, they have been judged and found worthy. It is the way of the Oranir to accord recognition and respect to the strong. You have made sufficient proof of your strength. The sun shall answer your call. You have our thanks. We are glad to call you allies. You? By what are you called? <laughs> oh, silly Ornir. Ishtola, why? Are you... Are you my Nama? I beg your pardon? In battle, you shone with all the majesty of the full moon's light. Your healing touch, the embodiment of the Dusk Mother's love. Long had I wondered if my Nama might not be a woman of the steppe. Beholding you, I am all but certain. Now, look into my eyes. Could it be? Could you be? I am. Not interested, little son. Try again when you've become a man. Oh, burn! Little. Little. <laughs> I love you, Stola. <laughs> <laughs> little son, little son. <laughs> you will ne never let him live it down. Does it pain you, little son? Crave you self to soothe the ache? Fire to sear the wound in your heart. Honestly, these two were made for each other. <laughs> Yet they never see it because they're so adversarial to one another. We have wasted enough time here. Siren awaits for word of our success. <laughs> let them <laughs> let those guys battle it out. <laughs> we'll love her spat. <laughs> we'll just we just won't get in the way. <laughs> oh my god, I love it so much. Anyways, let's talk to Sierra. If not only be only to contend with Sadu, but Magna too? Such a fierce battle it must have been. Yet here you stand, triumphant. Having passed such a test, you could not well deny you their allegiance. The Mole will make, make no such demands. Weak though we are, we will gladly stand with you. The Steppe is our home, and we will defend it with all of our being. You have our help, heartfelt thanks, and for the, all the tribes of the Steppe, there is none I would rather have at my side. Probably because you're more sensible. I cannot thank you enough, Serena. None of this would have been possible without you. Oh, wait, thank you. <laughs> she does a kind of a stiff bow. Mm. 
we have the re requisite consent. It is time to put Namaz, Namaz power to use. If the ether, throw, ether throws as, flows as planned, all that remains is to have the ironworks engineers do their work at the ruins. Come, let us return to the house of the cro crooked coin. I shall begin at once. You may wish to step back. Yo! Yo. Anything else in the club that could be moving over here? Did it work? It did. Ether may flow freely to the burn once more. Very brief, but hey, it was. I do not pretend to understand what you did, Yashtova, but you did it. Thanks to you and Esikos, of course, we have taken a momentous step towards securing our defenses. Okay, okay, here we go. Now, as much as I believe arrest is in order, we can provide mu make haste back to the Enclave. Agreed, the others may already have returned from the missions, and I would know how things stand. As would I. Without further ado, then. Little son. God, I love it. Come on, Clive. Our lords inform me that you are instrumental in the suggestion of his mission to the Azim Steppe. Though we hope to make many more allies, we could wish for no better than you. Each of the factions lent our ear to the petition. As anticipated, however, many were unwilling to do any more than that. Everyone has returned. Excellent. Time to take stock. It would seem we were the last to arrive. Judging by your uh, triumphant expressions, I take it all went well on the Azim step. Indeed, we were we have secured a suitable 
suitable source of energy from for the barrier. Good. Tatara and I have commissioned Garland Ironworks to ensure that the field generators function as they should. A team of engineers stand ready to set out for the burn at a moment's notice. You need only say the word. I thank you for engaging their services on our behalf. The minutiae of the arrangement you may leave to me. Which just leaves a small, small matter of our alliance. So, Yigiri, Akuru, Akuro? How fared you with our neighbors? My lord, all the factions we approach are in agreement that the Empire poses a threat and may respond positively to talks of an alliance. From Hingashi and Suinosato, however, we received outright rejections. The former will not break its treaty with the Empire, and the latter will not involve itself in conflict. Just as we expected, then. Well, there's not to be done about it. We must focus on the rest. To each of the nations uh, that are amenable to an alliance, I will person send a missive. And once I have attended to that, I believe we will have all done everything we can to fortify Doma's defenses. For the time being, at last, at least. All of which means I may leave for the meeting to in Alamigo for, with a lighter heart. Yigri, Akuro, if you would be so kind as to hold the fort in my absence. My friends, we could not have achieved so much in so little time without her help. For that, I give you my heartfelt thanks. Till then, till the meeting then. I took the liberty of asking Thancred to attend as well. We should have arrived in the, uh, he should have arrived in the Alamegan quarter by now. Then let us not keep him waiting, shall we? Well, let me get quarter. It occurs to me this will be the first time I met, meet the leaders of the Alliance in an official capacity. More stiff greetings, pleasantry, formalities. Does that sound about right? Let us hope that the coming meeting passes more peacefully than last uh, such gathering in Alamigo. Ushula has told, told, me, told me all, and I duly told Oriangi and Kryle. Ryle in particular was concerned about Alphano, but I assured her that everything ca that can be done be is being done. She agreed to continue with her own task for the time being, on the condition that I contact her the moment there is any development. So, that leaves four of us to attend the council. Our involved is here to assist with security, in incidentally, though the poor lad seems altogether too distracted for the task. Another one missing Alphano, I expect. Ah, but I'm almost time. As soon as we are ready, present yourself to the guardsmen at the palace entrance, and I shan't be far behind. Ah, science is the seventh on there. All right. Time for a cutscene marathon. Also means turn up the volume. I didn't, I didn't just let everything play. Mistress Lise, Commander Aldin, it gives me great pleasure to formally welcome the city-state of Alamigo to the Eorzean Alliance. The pleasure is ours, Your Grace. I know I speak for all Alamegans when I say that we are glad of this chance to stand with our comrades of the Alliance. And we, for our part, are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. Lord Hien of Dorma, at your service. Pray, accept my heartfelt thanks for your generous invitation. Nay, tis we who must thank you for journeying so far. And would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the part the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have played in bringing all of us together. 
In times of great unrest, you and yours have been our constant companions, without whom we would not be here. With apologies to Lord Hien and Mistress Alizé, it occurs to me that we have not gathered in this way since that fateful day in Uldar. The day I lost my arm and my freedom. As I lay in my cell, never did I dream that I would one day be given the chance to represent my homeland at this council. I would not even be alive had you not plucked me from the jaws of death. You, Yugiri, and Alfino. Would that the lad could be with us. I too owe my presence here to Alfino, in so many ways. Until such time as he returns, I mean to carry on his good work as best I can. Come, friends. Let us leave the past in the past and turn our eyes to the future. My Lord Hian, pray tell us how things stand in the East. Exposition! I had done mute for that. I think I'll stay unmuted. Having heard the rumors of dissent in Garlemald, I dared to dream of a peaceable solution. Hmm. <laughs> the Empire will not so easily change its ways. If the Garleans have a mind to take back Doma and Alamigo, we'll be hard pressed to stop them, even with the might of Six Nations. But while we lack the strength to fight the tide, a course may yet present itself, if we read the winds aright. The winds suggest but one course to me. One which leads from the sea unto the river and thence to the source of all our woes. The Asians. Indeed. All here have felt their blighted touch. It was the bringers of chaos who nurtured the Archbishop's tyrannical ambitions. They who bestowed upon him the secrets of summoning, as they have so many others before and since. And while they remain, we shall know no peace. Our objective is clear. The question is how to achieve it. That our enemy parades about in Xenos' skin poses problems in itself, but ere we get to them, how are we to infiltrate the Empire, and get close enough to strike? While I see the wisdom in targeting the Asians, an assassination attempt on Garlean soil would do little to aid our cause, even were it to succeed. It's time we used our enemy's preferred tactic, subterfuge. You have an idea? Speak your mind, Master Thancred. None here know the enemy better than the Scions, and you may have best of all. Whatever it is you propose, we will give it fair hearing. On that you have my word. Very well, Admiral. My proposal is thus. We dispatch the Shinobi to Imperial territory. There, they sow the rumor that the Crown Prince perished in the Battle for Alamigo, and that the man parading around is in fact a corpse inhabited by a Servant of Darkness. Well, it does have the ring of truth about it. And were the Gallians to learn that their future ruler is a puppet, the Empire would be shaken to the core. But... At the risk of sounding stupid, would they actually believe such an unlikely story? I didn't. Ordinarily not. But prior to his miraculous recovery, rumors of Xenos' death had already begun to circulate around the Empire. Ultimately, however, what the masses believe is not our chief concern. Our true objective is to create an opening for rival factions within Garlemald to exploit. Just as a war of succession erupted in the wake of Empress Solus's death. A war which raged until but recently, 
plunging the Imperial House into disarray as nephew and uncle grappled for the throne. It is no coincidence that one of Varus's first acts as emperor was to name Xenos heir apparent, family feuds being so tiresome when armies are involved. Not all welcomed his choice of successor, however. There is no shortage of individuals who aspire to the throne, who would jump at any chance to seize power. The news that Xenos is not only dead, but a puppet to diabolical forces, would be too enticing to ignore. The Empire would not be quick to recover from a second war of succession. I am no stranger to infiltrating Imperial territory. With a team of operatives gathered from among the Alliance's finest, the plan should have a reasonable chance of success. Dorma already has Shinobi in place throughout the provinces. We stand ready to act, and act we must. What say you all? I'm for Master Thankry's proposal. We shine a light upon the Asian and test the Empire's unity. Twas his plot that scuttled Doma's negotiations, was it not? Why then, if we can eliminate him, there may yet be a chance for peace. Let us wage this war of subterfuge, that we may one day lay down our arms. Gods know we never will while the Asians remain. Is it over? Master Thancred! Twelve for Fend. Bear him to a private chamber. Have every healer make ready. Swiftly! Being a white mage, you listen to the Pajol. Master Thancred remains in slumber. Though his vital signs appear stable, he's unresponsive. What could have done this? And, and why just him and not the others? I'm afraid we could not identify the cause, my lady. Our examinations revealed no wounds, nor the presence of any poisonous substances. Gods, that only makes it worse. You're to let us know the moment there's any change, all right? With a command in amongst the requests. Thank you for coming. Knowing Thancred, he would apologize for being otherwise engaged at so crucial a juncture. In gifting us a course of action, Thancred sowed the seed of all that is to follow. We have but to nurture it as best we can. To him, I would say, rest easy, that he may wake to enjoy the fruits of our labors. Now, the matter of the mysterious voice must not be forgotten. 
Will you tell me exactly what happened? Alizé and I heard a voice in the moments before Thancred collapsed. It was accompanied by a severe headache, as if something were clutching at our minds. Did you experience the same thing? Yeah, but he actually talked to me. So, in between the voice and the pain, you felt as if you were somewhere else entirely? And I felt like I was somewhere else entirely. <laughs> yeah. Your testimony confirms my suspicion. That which you experienced was, I believe, your soul being plucked from your flesh. Called. Called. I myself examined Thancred. Reach out as I may. I could not sense in him the spark of life that is his soul. That Thancred alone was stricken so is likely due to his heightened sensitivity to the effects of ether. A consequence of his prior possession by the Asian the Hebrea. The owner of the voice, whoever it may be, reached out to you, called your souls, and in so doing, caused you and yours such pain. But if that's true, where exactly are we being called to? I know not. Yet one thing is plain. Whoever waits for you on the other side is possessed of a power unlike any I have ever known. Forgive us, Lise, but may we leave Thancred in your care for a time? As if you had to ask. I may not be a scion anymore, but I'm no less a friend. Don't worry. I'll see to it that Thancred's well looked after. Just focus on solving this mystery, all right? Thank you, Lise. As the Elder Seedseer says, tis no ordinary individual we are dealing with. Nor can we discount the possibility of Asian involvement. Whoever or whatever is behind this, the sooner we find out, the better. I just tried to call Orange on his link pearl. He didn't respond, but I dare hope that he possesses some knowledge we do not. <clears throat> huh? Orange! Something happened during the meeting. Thancred collapsed. A disembodied voice suddenly started. What? But that's... We should talk about this in person. All right, we'll meet you there. I was Orange. He heard the voice too. In Thanalan? Hmm... <clears throat> As we alone were afflicted during the meeting, I have my suspicions, but if the voice also spoke to Orianger, there, there can be little doubt the scions are tar targeted specifically. By whom, to what end is in question, one of, which, one of which we must find an answer with all possible haste. Get the expression, door. Leonge agreed to meet us at the Rising Stones. If any of the others heard the voice, we'll find out soon enough. Good luck. I should get back to the meeting with the Elder Seedseer, but if there's anything I can do, anything at all, you must let me know, all right? Promise me. I we promise. And stop draining. Right. Let's be on our way. I don't remember if it's just teleport or goes directly into a cutscene. We'll see. In a second. After 
lag resolves itself. Oh, damn it. Hi, how are you today? I'm doing all right. A little warm. Which requires that I wear a shirt. Otherwise, I'd be shirtless. This this blanket I have over my chair might also not be helping much. Ah, music's back. That's a start. It's feel like I need to teleport to do road install. But first things first, I need to get on this freaking cutscene. Hashtag playing online game problem. Well, there goes the music again. Here we go. Cutscene. Jay, God, it's good to see you. Would that our meeting were under happier circumstances. I judged the voice sufficient cause for concern even before you sent word of its effect on our comrade. You heard it too, then? Aye. And all but certainly at the selfsame instant. Alas, pained as I was, I could make little sense of what few words did then reach mine ears. Who do you think is responsible? Could this be the Assians doing? That I cannot say. Not when so little is known. Ere I indulge in speculation, I would examine Thancred with mine own eyes. To Alamigo, then, without further delay. One other thing. During my visit to the Far East, I observed a strange phenomenon. Thou referrest, I presume, to the localized reduction in etheric density. Well, that spares me the trouble of an explanation. Yes, I noted precisely that at two apparently unconnected locations. I take it the phenomenon is not limited to the Far East. Indeed not. Of late, our agents charged with surveilling the beast tribes have spoken of little else. In every corner of the realm, they tell of places in which the ether hath grown thin. Naturally, my suspicions first turn to primal activity, but the areas thus affected betray no evidence of summoning. I must confess to being quite perplexed. If the same phenomenon is being observed in multiple locations on opposite sides of the world, we may safely discount regional factors. Needless to say, this warrants further investigation. Indeed. I shall make it my task to... Oop. Well, oh, shit. The voice... It calleth to me once more.
are two experts in atheology. <laughs> God damn it. Yishtola, Ariange, open your eyes. Open your eyes, I beg you. Say something, anything. Not again. Please, not again. Turn the volume down. Forgive me, this is unseemly display. It happened before our very eyes, my lady. None here would have behaved any differently. We are born the two of them to a private chamber, but tell me, is it true that Master Thancred languishes in his state in Alamigo? I'm afraid so. Though given the circumstances, we would best to observe them together. I will send word to Lise that he should be brought here. They can't, my lady. The world is full of scholars and knowledgeable folk of every persuasion. Someone out there is bound to know what ails our comrades and how it may be cured. Thus will we rouse them, no matter what. That we will, Hori. That we will. But first things first, our comrades will have questions. May I ask that you explain the situation to them? We must attend to a private matter. Oh, and I'm promised I'd visit someone in Limsa He's been waiting in Maelstrom Command for a while now. You know, you should come along too. I think he'd be glad to see you. Oh. One of my favorite things. Hey, remember I said this this part was called Prelude to Violet? That's the name of this quest. <laughs> we'll finish this quest and then uh, uh, pick up tomorrow. I think I'll have time. Hopefully I also have better internet. As you probably guessed, it's Gabu we're here we've come to see. The private private here will bring him out to us. Ever since the maelstrom took him in, we have tried to visit as often as I can, and after that befell what befell our friends, I've taken him to the urge to visit again. It's difficult to explain. Isn't there some Dio? What's over? What's acting? Take a pick. Yay. Dio. Voice. Here he is, my lady. Gabu. It's been too long. I'm afraid there's been no change. If he can see or hear us, he has given no sign. I see. You're still fighting. I'm proud of you. We promised that we would come and visit you together, didn't we? Alphano and I. I'm sorry that we haven't managed that yet. You know, with the three of us like this, does it not remind you of that night? Of the stars beyond count twinkling in the heavens? 
I was feeling pretty low back then. Powerless. But I knew that my brother was close by if I needed him, and that the others would be waiting for me back at the Rising Stones. Not like now. I've seen my share of trouble since coming to Eorzea. Been reminded again and again of my limitations, of how little I can change about this world. And I've come to know the sorrow of parting all too well. But to have the people I hold dear struck down before my eyes and be powerless to help them, that, that I cannot bear. Still at Ming. And for that, I am grateful. I don't know what I would do without you. Well, that's more than enough brooding for one day. Come on, we have friends to save. Let's return to the Rising Stones and take it from there. Thanks again for agreeing to come. It meant a lot to me. I did some thinking on the way back, and I think Hoy is right. We need to seek outside help. Ordinarily, we would turn to our own experts on such matters, but we're best <coughs> stricken. I will begin by reaching out to the myriad guilds and research institutions here in Eorzea. Additionally, Grandfather and Minfilia had a wealth of connections between them, and I mean to explore those avenues too. We'll find a way to save everyone. Mark my words. Much and more has happened in the recent days. Some of it for the good, some not so. But all around me, people continue their fight. From the shinobi who search for Alphnoon to the Alliance members who already moved against the Empire, they march on to the face of great adversity, bearing heavy burdens. Everyone is playing their part, and so must I. You have your own part to play, I know, and it's bigger than most, so I wouldn't keep you. Just promise that you'll visit from time to time, and I promise I'll get, have good tidings to share with you when we, you do. And as much as I'd loathe to do it, I'm going to uh, end with this cutscene. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace. I don't remember if there's voice acting or not. The Populares no longer present an obstacle. Now is the time to bring the Empire's might to bear. A word from your radiance is all it takes. But one word, and the Imperial Army will fall upon Alamigo as a pack of bloodthirsty wolves and tear that feeble nation apart. A 
Have you no words for me? Despite the lengths I go to, an emissary playing the part of a fool. When first I took this face, I swore to use all of my knowledge, all of my power, to further the cause of the Empire. My deeds stand testament to my commitment. And with this adamant flesh at my disposal, I could destroy the Icon Slayer as easily as one might swat a fly. Why do you hesitate? <sighs> Our enemy is resourceful. Though victory is certain now, it will not remain so indefinitely. Deliberate if you must, but be quick about it. We'll speak again when you have unburdened yourself of doubt. Until then, I take my leave. Father. I should be the one to sigh. I played my part to perfection. I had earned my rest, and then, thanks to La Habrea's crowning act of idiocy, our favorite emissary sees fit to summon me back. Elidibus was ever a warrior. A most tiresome trait, would you not agree? What? Have you no words for me either? No matter. I've long grown weary of this mummery. Now, my dearest grandson, let me remind you of your place in the simplest of terms. You do not make judgments, you administer them. Swiftly and to the letter. Naught else is your concern. Elidibus may be an insufferable bore, but he is no fool. His choices as emissary seldom err. If aught threatens the balance twixt light and dark, it falls to you to remove it. Be it by your own hands or by your armies, you have ample means at your disposal. That is why this empire exists, why I built it! Oh dear, have I touched a nerve? You always were an easy one to read. I pity you, I do. As they say, ignorance is bliss. And I know how much happier you would be not knowing the things you know. The Founding Father was an Assian, and he created the Empire solely for the purpose of sowing the seeds of chaos. Don't take it personally. I merely do my duty. To bring about a calamity requires no small amount of power. And there is no surer way to obtain such power than by collecting powerful pawns. 
To that end, I have labored long and hard, and I must say I am quite pleased with my handiwork. Paltry, though it seems, in comparison to Alec. You fiends are over fond of your own voices. Mark me, Asian. Man is the master of his own destiny. <sighs> Such a waste of time and energy, both yours and mine. Lest you forget you are emperor now. If you wish to spout drivel about man's destiny, save it for the masses. It will serve to give them a sense of purpose and you pliant pieces for the game. Oh, do stop sulking, boy. You, of all people, should understand. Ours is a struggle to restore both mankind and the world to their rightful state. Viewed thus, our goals are one and the same. That wasn't ominous at all. Meanwhile, at the resistance encampment somewhere in the Empire. Hey, it's Alphado. He's alive and well. And with Shadowhunter and his friends. Minions? I don't know. That's right, this is a voice for it. What in the world? That's eh, a bunch of dead people. Dead, all dead. Yet I see no wounds, nor any evidence of battle. Damn it, they finally used it. The Empire developed an alchemical weapon, Garabania gas, Black Rose it was called, and to breathe it is to breathe your last. And that did this? I thought the project abandoned as vile fruit destroyed, but not else could have wrought such an atrocity. Fools. What do they hope to gain from this butchery? Can they not see that a rule won through terror would not endure? How many more provinces must they lose? Hey, wait. This is not the work of men, but monsters. The Asians. It cannot be a coincidence that their trail led us here. My objective was never to rule, but to sow strife and discord.
Such a crime does not indeed bear the mark of the bring bringers of chaos. Black Rose cannot be allowed to kill again. We must find the Arsians and put an end to their plot. Ta -da! Ready for the next quest, which we'll do tomorrow. Thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing or what's going on for the month of June. Yes, it will be July 1st, but hey, what do you expect? Yeah, had a lot going on. Had a uh, difficult thing last week. Um, Greg Baller, Men of the Den, and uh, the Fallout 76 community had passed suddenly. Uh, we did have him on a show, on one of uh, Cubs Out Loud show, and we uh, posted a flashback about that, as well as a link in the post at CubsOutLoud.com, which has the uh, has the link to where to go for that. That was audio only, so there wasn't a video. There is a video of the original, but uh, there isn't a new video posted. Or uh, check out the post on CubsOutLoud.com uh, to listen to that. What's going on tomorrow? Tomorrow, some more streaming here. And then Bears and Dragons are going to be on Sunday. Brand new day. Brand new time. Oh, they're almost at the end, man. Oh, dear God. This is the part that I don't enjoy as much. Oh, I got a lot to pray. But the battle at the... Uh, Will of Dragons is, is soon upon us, but uh, of course preparations need to be made. Uh, so see you there. Uh, and if uh, this, you're watching this afterwards, um, check out the Bears and Dragons channel or uh, playlist. Uh, almost 50 episodes getting to get through this campaign. Uh, with that, we will cut out. Don't forget, CubsOutLoud.com. Email CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Voicemail 361 COL Talk 361 265 8255. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. I'm not Tumblr, not really Tumblr. Twitter, uh, and uh, of course, YouTube. It comes out loud. And that's all that comes slash comes out loud for merchandise. Patreon, patreon.com slash comes out loud. And PayPal.me if you want to send some cash. Uh, really need to see if I can put a requisition in something that might enhance this stream uh what else yeah that's about it i will see you all next time